preach this, and I, I preached it. I taught it. In 2011, God started changing me. In 2015, he said, don't you ever say it again. And I'll tell you this. I wish I could take some of that stuff that I had preached from years back off the Internet. That's the thing about social media now. If you say it, it's alive forever. And you and I are growing in revelation. Come on, we're growing in truth. We're maturing. We're going from faith to faith and from So we shouldn't be staying at the same level of faith. We shouldn't be staying at the same level of glory. So watch this. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices. Oh, children, pay attention to this. Can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshipers, once purified, would have no more conscience of sins. Look at verse 3. But in those sacrifices, in what sacrifices? Those sacrifices for sin. Those sacrifices uh, for, for relationship. Those sacrifices for condition. He says in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. So what he's saying is every time they would bring a gift, every time they would bring something in order for God to respond to them favorably, even though they were bringing an offering, there was a reminder of the fact in bringing that offering that the sin issue had not been settled. I need you to hear this. Because when we preach and teach people that their giving gets God to respond to them, we are reinforcing the fact that they are not in relationship with God. You didn't hear what I just said. When we preach and teach to people that if you do this, God's going to do this. If you do this, God's going to do this. If you, we are reinforcing in them the fact that they are not in relationship with God. So you've got to do something to get God to respond to you favorably. And the fact of the matter is God has already responded to you favorably in Jesus Christ. He has already settled those issues. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Ask him, are you tracking this? Are you tracking this? So, so, so in the old covenant, there was this system of offerings and giving to get God to respond, to get God to be favorable, to get God to do something. The law of the old covenant with its sacrifices reminded the worshipers, watch this, of their debt. It reminded them that they owed God. I got to bring this to God. So I can get this response. I got to bring this to God so I can get this response. I got to bring this to God so I can please God. I need you to hear me. And I understand what we have preached and what we have taught. But in the new covenant, your giving does not please God. He's already pleased. I'm going to show it to you from the Bible. Your giving does not please God. He's already happy. Every time you wake up, you wake up to a satisfied father and you wake up to a seated high priest. God is already pleased with you because he is pleased with Jesus. And when you got born again, he put you in Christ and you get the same response that God has given to Jesus. So your giving is not what pleases God. Listen, ah, you're looking at me like I'm preaching from another world. Look at your neighbor say, actually, he is. Look at Isaiah 53. Look at Isaiah 53. Look at Isaiah 53 and verse number 10. Oh, this is good. Isaiah 53 and verse number 10. When you're there, shout, I am. I am. Isaiah 53 and verse number 10. Watch this. Isaiah is speaking prophetically. Oh, I love this. Woo! I love this. Isaiah is speaking prophetically before it happens, peering into the future some 700 years and declaring what the finished work of Jesus would accomplish. Watch this, because the Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, but it was not yet activated in the earth. So the prophets could see it, but it wasn't yet in force. Do you hear what I just said? So watch this. Look at verse number 10. 
It says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. Watch this. When you make his soul an offering for sin. So his soul is the offering. No, you didn't get it. His soul is the offering for sin. So the whole system of sacrifices for sin was satisfied by his soul. His soul, because his mind, his will, his emotions. When you make his soul an offering for sin, watch this. He shall see his seed. Now watch this. When Jesus' soul is made an offering for sin on that cross, the Bible says the Father sees that as a seed. You shall see his seed. He shall, I love this, he shall prolong his days. Watch what this word prolong here is the Hebrew word arak, which means to defer or to hold back to another time. In other words, the father is seeing Jesus' sacrifice and he is applying that sacrifice to another time and to another people. When it says he shall see his seed and prolong his days, it literally means he shall defer it. In other words, he shall see what Jesus is doing, but he shall apply it to you. He shall see what Jesus is doing, but he shall apply it to me. He shall see what Jesus is doing, but he shall apply it to a people who shall call upon the name of the Lord and believe that that sacrifice settled the issue. So now watch this. He sees Jesus' seed and applies it to me. He sees what Jesus does and credits me with it. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. This is grace. This is him doing the time for your crime. This is him taking the penalty for what you and I have done. So he sees the sacrifice and he applies it to you. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and tell them it has been applied to you. No, you didn't say it strong enough. Tell them it has been applied to you. Look at your neighbor and say, heaven has it recorded. That you have already paid for every sin. That there is no sacrifice you need to bring to please God. Look at this. I'm almost finished with this part of it. Watch it. He shall see his seed prolong his days. Watch this. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Look at this. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God is satisfied. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. So if God is already satisfied, what is it that you can do that can satisfy him more? He has already been satisfied by the finished work of Jesus. Now you say, Bishop McClendon, if that is true, then what does my seed do? Why am I to give? Why am I to bring anything to God? What is the giving for? Well, let me settle one thing before I go any further. Go to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 21. Go to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 21. I need you to see this. You know this, but I need to, to do it in context so you can see it all together. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 21. Are you still with me? Well, let's go up to verse 18. It says, let no one deceive himself. If any one of you seems to be wise in this age, let him be a fool that he may become wise. He said, don't, don't deceive yourself. Don't apply natural principle to kingdom issues. Don't, 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 don't deceive yourself. Don't move in line with your own understanding rather than in line with the word of God. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Watch this. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them this is new covenant. This is new, covenant. This is new creation. This is new creation. Reality. All things are yours. Say it, all things are yours. Say it, all things are yours now. 
Say it again. All things are yours now. Because Jesus settled the debt at the cross and the transfer of all things was made to him. And because you are in him, all things are yours. Now, wait a minute. If all things are mine, how can my giving cause God to give something to me when it's already mine? See, you've got to go back to the old covenant. And remember, the old covenant is type and shadow. Everything that God told the children of Israel belonged to them, somebody else was occupying it when God said it was theirs. You didn't get what I just said. Somebody else had it. But God said it was theirs. You see, God has the ability to transfer title and not tell your enemies. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said. He has the ability to shift things and not tell your adversary it's yours. So you have to believe it's yours. And this is why the Bible talks about possessing your inheritance. It's already yours, but you have to possess it. It's not yours when you get it. No, you didn't hear what I just said. It's not yours when you get it. When you get it, that's when the transfer in the earth is finished. But it's yours before you get it. So this is why God would often say in the scripture, See, I have given you Jericho. See, see, see that it's yours. Because until you see that it's yours, you can't possess it. Until you know that it's yours, you can't step into it. See. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say, you got to see it. Say it again. You got to see that it's yours. The house is already yours. The money is already yours. The building is already yours. The finance is already yours. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world. Karebo shandarabak. Shiba reshanda. Lay your hand on your brother and tell him the transfer has already been made. Say it again. The transfer has already been made. Pastor Chris, some years ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, know this. I reveal no works in progress. You, no, you didn't. you didn't hear what I just said. He said, son, I reveal no works in progress. If I show it to you, it's because it's yours already. If I speak it to you. Lay your hand on your brother and tell him if he showed it to you, it's because it's already yours. If he spoke to you about it, it's because it's already yours. If you saw it in the spirit, hey, I don't know who I'm talking to. Tell your neighbor, there's no way you won't get it. There's no way. There's no way. Sit down, I got a little further to go. I feel the power of God. There are some things that the enemy will never be able to withhold from you again. We got to change the way we're talking. We're talking about going into the enemy's camp. That's old covenant. The enemy has no camp. He has been ejected. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy. Enemy has no camp. He's an illegal alien on a planet that belongs to Jehovah and his children. Excuse me, I'll shout all by myself. Sit down. I'm almost finished. Hey! Excuse me. 
Hallelujah. Watch. Look, 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 look at verse 21. Karebo shandele masi. Andele boshata. Therefore let no one boast in men. For all things are yours. Watch this. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world. Or the world. Or the world. Or life. Or death. Watch this. Or things present. Those are yours. And things to come. Those are yours. They're yours even though they're to come. They're not yours when they come. They're yours before they come. Now you say, prophet of God, this is good. But therefore, what is my seed for? Why, why should I sow? Why should I give? See, my seed in this country, remember, look at your neighbor and say, as it is this day. No, 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 I can't let you get away with that. Look at your neighbor and say, as it is this day. And remind them the covenant you're in in this day. No, 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 no. Let me come back. Let me come down here. Look at your neighbor and say, it's as it is this day. And the covenant you're in in this day is different than the covenant they were in. When God made the promise, all things weren't theirs. Because the price had not been paid in full in the earth. So watch this. Ah! So I said, God, then what does my seed do? Why do I sow? Why do I give? Remember this. Ah, remember this. If you want to understand God's original intention, you've got to go back to before the fall. Because everything after the fall is a recovery project. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Everything after the fall is a recovery project. If you want to understand God's original intention, you have to go back and examine things before the fall. The Bible says that God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man that he had formed. And he said to him, all of this is yours. It's all yours. And the Bible says he put him in the garden, watch this, to tend it and to keep it, not to work for it. Everything was his, and all he had to do was tend it as his and keep it as his. You must understand, Adam did not have a job for which he was compensated. Working for a living is under the curse. Uh, you didn't hear what I just said. I didn't say you shouldn't work. I said the believer doesn't work for a living. He said, all this is yours. Oh, please hear me. All this is yours, and all you've got to do is tend it and keep it. So Adam doesn't have a job. He has an assignment. It is his assignment that is connected to his provision, not his job. I got news for you. Your job is not where your provision comes from. It's your assignment from God that is connected to your provision. That's why you can have a job and not be in your God-given assignment and not prosper. And it's so interesting. I don't know how it is here, but in America, people get good jobs and then they stop doing what they're doing in the kingdom of God. And then they wonder what happened to their prosperity. You didn't understand. Your prosperity was not connected to where you work. It was connected to the God you are worshiping in assignment. Almost done. So you say, Bishop McClendon, what is my seed for? And then God took me. Over here, look at your neighbor and say, this is new covenant reality. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, this is new creation reality. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, all things are yours. All things are yours. Now go to Luke 6, verse 
37 and 38. I'm almost done. And when I read this, Pastor Benny, in light of the revelation knowledge that the Spirit of God was giving me, I said, how in the world did I miss this? And I'll tell you why we missed it. Because we have been preached to a mixture of old and new covenant. We've been preached a mixture of old covenant truth and new covenant truth. And the only truth that the Holy Spirit is confirming in this hour is new covenant truth. We are ministers of the new covenant and of the spirit. Not of the letter. That word letter there means not of the writing. But of the vital principle and the mental disposition. You didn't hear what I just said. That's why you can quote scripture and still not know God. The Pharisees, the Sadducees could quote scripture, but they did not know God because they had majored in the grammatos. That's what that Greek word is. They had majored in the writing. They could quote it to you, scripture and verse, but they had no understanding of the spirit. And that word spirit there is not only a reference to the Holy Spirit, it actually means the vital principle and the mental disposition of God. They could read the scripture, but they did not know God's mind. They could quote scripture, but they had not understood the vital principles of relationship between God and man. And that's why when they brought a woman to Jesus caught in the midst of the act of adultery and they said Moses in the grammatos, Moses in the writing says she should be stoned. But what do you say? And he says, he that is without sin among you. Let him throw a stone at the first. Well, actually, what he did, first of all, was the Bible said he got down and he wrote in the ground. I have heard preacher after preacher after preacher talk about trying to figure out what Jesus wrote. It's not important what he wrote. It's not important at all what he wrote. If it was important what he wrote, then the Holy Spirit would have revealed to us what he wrote. The Holy Spirit doesn't tell us, so it's not important. It's not important what he wrote, Pastor Dan. It's important that he wrote. Why? Because the Bible declares that that old covenant was written with the finger of God. And when Jesus got down in the earth, he said, you're about to kill her based on the previous finger. And I have come to write a new law in the earth. I have come to reveal the mind of God. God doesn't want anybody killed. God not willing that anybody perish I'm almost done this is the difference between the letter and the mind God is looking for the people now who can't just quote scripture but understand his mind understand the vital principles of relationship with him lay your hand on your brother Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him he's almost done yelling at you tonight. <laughs> so watch it. Everything has been reconciled to God. One day, Pastor Benny, I was praying and I was in the spirit and I was so hungry. And I said, God, show me, show me something else about the blood. Just tell me something about the blood. I love the blood of Jesus so. He, he said, tell, tell me something about the blood. And I saw a vision. I saw a cross extend from the globe, from the planet. And I saw a drop of blood fall from the cross to the earth. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, the moment the first drop of blood fell from the cross to earth, this entire planet became an altar unto God and everything on it belongs to him. Everything on it is to be offered to him. It's all yours. So watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get, let me get to it. So what does my giving do? Look at Luke 6, 37, 38. Jesus is laying down principles of the new covenant. And he says, judge not... And you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Watch this. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, 
and running over, the King James says, shall men. Everybody say, shall men. Shall men. Say it again, shall men. shall men. Say it again, shall men. Shall give into your bosom. Get the context. Jesus saying, give judgment and judgment will be given to you. Give condemnation and condemnation will be given to you. Give forgiveness and forgiveness will be given to you. Give finances, give seed, give material and it will be given to you. Watch this. Shall men give into your bosom? And then I saw it. God said to me, your giving is not to get me to do anything. I've already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. They're already yours. Your giving is what causes men, not God, to respond to you in line with the will and plan of God for your life. Your giving is what causes somebody, somewhere, to begin to respond to you in line with the favor and the will of God. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and say these words to them. Every time you release a seed, something that is already yours leaves the hand of somebody who thought it was theirs. But it actually belongs to you. And once you give, they have to release what belongs to you. No matter where it is in the earth. No matter where it is on the planet. No matter whose hand it's in. Somebody somewhere has got to give to you. I need you to lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. See, this is what God spoke about in Isaiah 55 when he said those of us who do the word, not only will men respond to us, he said the trees will clap their hands. He said the rivers will respond. In other words, when you're a giver at the word of God, God causes men and creation to begin to respond favorably to you. No, you didn't hear what I just said. If there's somebody who won't obey, God will move them and put somebody in who will obey. I need you to look at somebody and tell them somebody has to respond to you. No, you didn't hear what I just said. Tell them somebody has to respond to you when you give. Tell them your seed is for men to move, not for God to move. He has already moved. Lay your hand on your brother. I'm about to speak to you. Under the anointing of the Spirit of God, I'm about to speak to you. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I'm about to speak to you. I need you to say to your neighbor, say somebody somewhere is about to be tapped on the shoulder concerning what you need. Lay your hand on your brother. Say somebody somewhere is about to see your face come before them. They may not even know who you are, but when you show up, they'll say, I saw you a week ago. I, I saw you a few days ago. When they scratch their head and say, I don't know why I'm doing this. You can look at them and say, I know why you're doing it. I sowed a seed and somebody has to respond. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them it doesn't matter how much money you have. You're going to get it anyway. Favor is better than silver and gold. Lay your hand on your brother. Say it doesn't matter who has opposed you. God is going to put you in front of someone. 